testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Um, wanted to give you some quick thoughts on last night's card on ESPN. Really, the first good card um, since boxing's returned from from the pandemic. Um, and by good, I mean what you would expect to see on a on a good uh, showbox card. Uh, two prospects, um, and then a bunch of fillers in between. Uh, but the prospects we were supposed to see in Josh Greer in the main event and uh, Giovanni Santion in the co-main were supposed to be good prospects. Uh, Santion is signed with Thompson Promotion, top boxing, and signed his co-promotional deal with Top Rank. And they were going to look at him as a guy who could compete possibly for a world top 147. And then Josh Greer, who is our 2018 um, prospect of the year. Uh, really a phenomenal very athleticism, good power speed. He's had great punch output and volume in the past. Didn't show that at all in the first six or so rounds uh, last night. And then late, it's too, too little, too late. Uh, first, I want to give credit where credit is due. I really like what ESPN is doing. They put the Coleman on first and then the fillers and then the main event. Um, I like that. You know, it, it, it keeps your attention on it. Um, and you don't have to sit through a million bad fights. It's good. Talent. Um, and the was really good. Uh, Giovanni Santion took a uh, uh, majority decision, majority decision over Antonio DeMarco. Uh, and this was going to be hotly debated. It would Twitter be uh, uh, Marco uh, Villagas and uh, Vegas and, and a couple other people. I, I thought the judge had it right. And I thought the judge had it right. And I'm quite certain they had it right. Uh, it was a good, it was a good fun scrap. It really, really was uh, a fun scrap. Um, I thought Demarco won the first rounds, and I gave two, three, four to Santion, and I gave five, six, uh, yeah, five, six, and seven to Demarco, and then I gave the last three rounds to Santion. Uh, I knew that that was going to be unpopular. I knew going in, and so I gave the last three rounds to Santion, so I had six, four, Santion. Um, you know, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, and the other rounds. I, I put on my Twitter. Uh, like the, I have it for Santion. Let's see how the judges have it. Um, and I knew it wasn't going to be popular, but I think the judge got it right. Look, the Marco Voyager. We all like the Marco. He's a good guy. He fights hard. He's always in. You know, he plays spoiler. Um, he's always in a tough scrap. He's always. But look. And I went back and watched it even wider. But I, I'll go with my six foot scorecard. DeMarco won the first round. I, I think we can all agree on that. After that, look, he, he landed some jabs, but he was getting beat up on the inside. And Santian's not a – he doesn't have power. He, he can't crack, okay? He's a natural right-hander who fights from the uh, southpaw stance. All his power is in his right hand. He's got nothing in that left hand. I, I I don't know what you want to do with it if you want to, if you want to switch him around, but this is not going to work at the highest level. Um, he's got no power in his power hand. That's a problem. All of his power is in his lead hand. Um, he he throws a nice jab and he's got that jab that he you know turns over just a little bit like a little bit like a hook. Um, and he's got good good snap on, it, but that's it. Like he's got nothing to follow up on. He also doesn't move his head at all. Look, Santion is a good offensive fighter. He throws nice combinations. He's got a good work rate. Um, he fights well on the in inside. You know, offensively, he's probably a seven and a half out of ten. Defensively, he's a zero. I, I mean, he doesn't move his head at all. He's basically target practice for Demarco, and Demarco's a good fighter. He's a he's a he's a he's a pro. You know, he's a cagey guy. He's a tough competitor. But you got to handle guys like that. I mean, you really do, especially if you want to be taken seriously at the next level. Um, I, I had him standing on rallying to win the last three rounds to take it. I, let me know what you guys had because everyone I talked to pretty much had it for DeMarco. If, if you do that, you're ignoring everything Santion, uh, Santion did on the inside. He won the fight on the inside. 
Clearly, I, I thought he, he he landed the cleaner shots, um, and, and he landed more shots. I, mean, I know, I, I don't know what the punch number said, but I'm sure Demarco landed plenty of, uh, of jabs that kind of half landed or this and that. And I'm not saying it was a one side; it was a close fight. But the judges got it right. Santiago won that fight. He did just a little bit more. Um, and then he rallied late, and I, I thought he he closed the show, winning the last three rounds to seal the deal. I know a lot of y'all are going to say, DeMarco, but go back. It, it just count each round. Count who lands the better shots on the inside. He's landed some uppercuts. He landed some left hooks. He's doing some good work. And, and DeMarco landed clean shots too. But if you go back, Santiago, Santiago lands just a little bit more, and they're a little bit cleaner. DeMarco fired off a lot of shots from range. It didn't really land clean. I mean, they have one. You can kind of count them. But if I, if I land a couple – Long range shots from the outside that kind of land, kind of get blocked, and you land two or three clean shots on the inside. I'm, you know, the guy landing the, the work on the inside to winning those rounds. And I, I felt like that's what we had here, and I knew it was going to be an unpopular decision because, from a, if you if you're just kind of viewing it, not really watching it, really scoring it, I could see how you thought Demarco won, but he didn't. Judges got it right. Go back, go back. Uh, and, and watch it again. Uh, I think 6-4, Santion's probably the right score. And that's how two of the three judges had it. The other had it 5-5. Five, five. Uh, now back to Santion. He's got issues. He, he's not going to be able to compete with the top 10 to 15 guys at 147. Not off of that performance. Um, it was a step up fight, and he won it. So he stayed undefeated. He, he did what he was supposed to do there. But he's eaten too many shots. I mean, he's out of San Diego. Canelo trains in San Diego. He needs to get a. He needs to be a part of that camp. Uh, he needs to learn some head movement like Canelo has because his head movement is not existent. I mean, Demarco sat there and fired off shot after shot, and I mean, he tries to pick him off and then counter, and it's it's not really his thing, right? He likes to be aggressive and he likes to come forward. You got to be able to slip shots if you want to come forward. You got to be able to slip shots. You can't just eat eat some, try to block some with a high guard, and then counter off that at the highest level. It's not going to work. I mean, could you imagine him fighting Keith Thurman or Errol Spence that way? He'd get destroyed. So he's got to learn how to move his head, slip punches side to side to get on the inside and then do it. Because he fights well on the inside. I, I thought he fought well on the inside. But he can't eat shots like that. Not from Terrence Crawford, a precision puncher like Crawford. And it doesn't even, Jamal James would pick him apart. Guys like that, guys, 10 to 15 guys. Mikey Garcia picks him apart. You can't get hit with that many shots. You got to move your head. You can't just sit there, Josh Clotty style, and try to block him. And then get in this. You know, Clotty didn't like Clotty like the outside, who had good uppercuts on the inside. Um, so it was a little different with Clotty. But with Santiago, his, his whole game plan is to get on the inside. Like, think of Mike Tyson if he couldn't slip shots. I mean, what made Tyson <laughs> successful was that he could slip shots with the best of them. You know, you can't just sit there and try to pick off shots when the guy's longer and rangier and quicker than you. Um, so he's got a lot to work on. But I, I, I thought – I felt he won the fight. I thought the judges got it right. Uh, let me know what you think. How, how did y'all have it? And go back and watch it. And, and tell me that I'm wrong. That Santiago's not landing the cleaner shots. Doesn't land more clean shots on the inside. Um, then the main event. Uh, Josh, don't blink Greer. Uh, a guy we're big fans of on the show. He was, like I said, he was our prospect of the year. Um, I'm sorry, in 2017, there's our prospect of the year. He burst on our scene back uh, in, in 2017 on a Roy Jones Jr. call that was on uh, B in television, whatever it was called at that particular time. Um, the talent and the skill is all there. It's just, he started too slow. He got knocked down twice. And I, I want to get into those knockdowns because I'm, Obviously, a huge fan of Greer. I think he's an all-world town. I still think he can get there. He's only 26. Let's go back and let's move quick now. Let's, let's, let's move Greer quickly now. Um, he, he, he ate those two hooks. And look, I'm not saying it's a chin issue. I'm saying, like, for a guy with a reflex as quick as Josh Greer, how can you be getting hit by those? He wound up with those. Those weren't little short hooks that he turned on on the inside. Like he wound up and threw those. Like you gotta get out of the way. How do you not see those coming and and, and get out of the way of those? Um, when you're as quick and and you have cat like reflexes like Greer does. Like Greer's prowess is athleticism. He's an athlete with great speed and good power. 
and you didn't see any of that. He got knocked down twice. I thought he won the second and third rounds, um, and then four or five, and then he got knocked down again in six, and then he came on strong, and and, and yeah. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, and ten. He came on strong, and especially in seven, eight, he had his two best rounds. But you see, he picked it up and he got on the inside. He used his speed to get himself on the inside, which is what he has to do. Look, he has a nice jab. He's not a great jabber. He's not a master boxer, right? He he wants to fight a little bit like Pernell Whitaker, a little bit like Arislandi Lara. It's not that's not who he is. He needs to get on the inside. He needs to use his quickness to get on the inside. He's not a pure boxer where he's going to sit there and out. You know, and not maneuver you, and not jab you, and win the fight like that. That's not going to happen at the highest level. You know, he needs to get on the inside, and he needs to use his speed and power to get on the inside and do his work on the inside, like he did in seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, I'm not even sure he won nine and ten. I gave him the tenth, um, and I gave Planilla the ninth. So I had it ninety-five, ninety-three for Planilla, and I I thought I gave almost all the close rounds to Josh Greer, but like Josh Greer is not. Not Josh, Josh Greer just has to start faster. You can't get knocked down twice and give away most of the first six rounds. You got to pick up. You got to go inside. You got to get inside. You got to seek and destroy. Like Greer's got a unique ability where he's got those lightning quick reflexes and skills um, and athleticism, but he's also throws really good combinations, power combinations on the inside. So he's got to slip. He's got to get on the inside and let it go. It was a little bit of Adrian Broner in last night in the first six rounds. Of I was like, let your hands go, dude. He came up as a volume puncher, a volume puncher with pop and great speed and reflex. I, I talked to him really early on in his career, and I've seen him like twice. I didn't even look at his box record. I'm like, who beat you that early in your career? It was Stephen Fulton, so it's a, it's a credible name. But he's got to do better than this. I mean, he got behind, and then he went for, for broke, and uh, plenty of had a – Rock solid jaw because um, Greer, who's got excellent power, cracked it a few times and he didn't go anywhere. But he had to fight that way the whole time. I don't think Greer is done. I don't think Pania is, is the end. I don't think we're going to see him winning world titles or anything like that. A lot of fun fights. Um, but I don't think we're done with Greer. And I don't want to get into a couple of things. So I think everyone who watched the fight agreed that Greer won. Now, whether you had it six, uh, you know, five, five. With the two knockdowns, we were like, I had it. We had a little wider. Um, I think we all agree that that plenty of won the fight. Uh, the brother of the VP of operations, Paul Brown, over at top rank. How is this not a conflict of interest? Like, I, I think about that. Like, what if you had Greg Popovich's little brother refereeing? NBA finals against the San Antonio Spurs. Like that's that's a conflict of interest. How the commission allows the VP of top ranks, little brother, to score fights with top ranked fighters in it is beyond me. I, I get his license. And I'm sure he's uh, he's actually a horrible judge. He's actually the worst judge in the world. He scored uh, Manny Pacquiao versus Jesse Vargas six rounds to six with a knockdown being the difference. I mean, he gave six rounds to Jesse Vargas. He's a terrible judge. We, we, you can say what you want about Adelaide Bird. Uh, Moretti's the worst. Moretti's the and I've been saying this. And this is not anything new. I, I, I've been criticizing Moretti, and now you have this, right? He gave every single close round to the top ranked fighter. Well, why wouldn't he? His brother's the VP of top rank. I mean, you can't have this, guys. Really, if you listen to this, you know, you you, you need to raise think about this. Right? I want that fight? Every single time to the room and get to the top rank. It's unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about yesterday morning, this was 16 to 1. Josh Greer was the favorite, 16 to 1. By the time, by the day afternoon, not even by the time we got to the ring, by the time later that afternoon, it was 3 to 1. What? That's not normal, right? So think about it. You bet uh, $100, you win $1,600 this morning. That didn't make the same bet. You only win three hundred on the same hundred dollar bet. That's not, guys. That is not normal. Someone needs to look into what caused that. And then you had the weird scoring from Moretti. There's something really fishy about that fight. I mean, this uh, we're gonna look into it. And we're gonna find out what we can. Um, I'm gonna maybe send out some FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests, and, and see what was going on with that. Someone knew something, and then they put like Moretti was the judge, and he 
at the bogus car. Guys, there's something that stinks about that fight. You agree with how you benefited from closest is not doing both of them. Okay? They were really close. Um, and this one wasn't. He lost. Right? The great loss. And still, Top Ranks VP's brother to other fight even when no one else in the world did. That needs to be looked into. Uh, but let me know what y'all think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Let me know what you think of Santion and Greer. Um, follow me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. You can also find my work at uh, fightpost.uk. Uh, and uh, listen to our podcast. We usually do it twice a week on MCR Radio. Uh, on YouTube, uh, Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.